All right. Hello. I am Melissa, and here we go. It's starting already. So, uh, <laughs> whew, pressure's on. So, uh, as said, I work here at Britannia, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about some of the houses here on the site and some of the buildings that people lived and worked in. So, here we go. Um, so, as many of you probably know, uh, this Richmond was originally called Lulu Island because we are an island. This area is a tidal area, which means when the tides roll in from the ocean, the river water level can get up to 18 feet. So the people that lived and worked here needed to build their houses up, and they are all located on stilts and with boardwalks. So you're going to see a lot of these houses coming up. Uh, so the intention of this part of the park that I'm talking about here was to recreate a residential area reminiscent of worker housing on the waterfront at the turn of the 20th century. The buildings were relocated to this site from Steveston as examples of housing used by those who worked on the waterfront. Uh, for example, the two red buildings that are, of course, at the end of that photo are the Murchison houses, and they are, um, oh, I lost where I was, a representative of the knockdown or prefab houses that were found along the Steveston waterfront. The prefabricated sections were brought to Steveston by barge all the way from New Westminster to be assembled by the cannery companies to house their workers. Also, as I've mentioned, you will see all of these boardwalks connecting all of the buildings. These boardwalks served as the main street along the waterfront. Canneries, shipyards, and wharfs would be located on the water side and boat works, services, and residences were on the land side. And all of these boardwalks branched off, connected all the workers' homes and to the surrounding areas to keep their feet out of that water. So, <laughs> keeps the workers happier when they're not quite as soggy. Okay, so the first two houses I'll be talking about are these two red ones here, which are known as the Murchison Houses. Specifically, the short one is the Merchantson Visitor Center, and the taller one is currently known as the Manager's House. Um, in 1895, John Edward Merchantson purchased the two buildings, moved them to his farm on 2nd Avenue, and then joined them together. Mr. Merchantson was Steveston's first police chief and customs officer, and he actually convert. that's in between the two buildings I'm talking about right now, little artsy greenery shot, um, and he converted a portion of the smaller building to use as his place of business. And then later on, beginning in 1931, all the way until 1956, the Franciscan, Franciscan Sisters of the Atonement used the building as a kindergarten slash daycare. That's that one right there. Uh, for Japanese children that actually lived in the area. And then in 1993, the buildings were donated to the Murchison House Preservation Committee and moved here to Britannia. Now, this one is the Point House, um, and I'm going to be talking about that one, and this little blue one right here, known as the European Men's Bunk House. Um, they were both originally located across from what is now Gary Point Park on 7th Avenue. These houses were moved to the Britannia site in 2004 due to redevelopment of the property on which they were located. And they are two of the best examples of what worker housing would have been like back in the day. Uh, the Blue House was actually built circa 1888 and was owned originally by the Hornbrook family in the 1940s and 50s and later by the Reed family. That one right there. Um, and it now currently serves as our, an example of what uh, the European workers who worked here at Britannia would have lived in. And if you haven't been inside, it's great. Uh, of course, they're all great, but that's a fun one for sure. Um, now, the tan house beside it, that is not this one, um, as I mentioned, is called the Point House. And it was built in 1912 and now serves as an exhibit area and actually also as the home of our site caretakers. Um, the house is called the Point House as it is rumored to have been rented for 30 years by the Musqueam Chief Point and his family. Um, you'll see the triangular frame near the waterline marks where a roof and doorway existed after the stilt level had been closed in to create a new first story. So there it is. 
Perfect. Okay. So I seem to have gone a little bit quickly. These are these buildings. <laughs> Look at them. They are blue and red. There is a boardwalk here and water. You will see that water and a reflection of the buildings in the water. Yes, you will see that. And hey, that's the visitor center from the back. You will notice that there is a plant in this photo and some grass and yet again, more boardwalk. Mm-hmm. I think the next one is actually the photo that I want it to be. Here we go. Is it maybe? Maybe? Yes, this is the building that I am talking about now, which also happens to be where we are. At the moment, this is the Chinese bunk house. And that is on my second piece of paper. Uh, this is the typical of the accommodations local canneries would have provided for Chinese laborers. Uh, the bunkhouses were large, two-storied, and usually built on pilings over the water and, surprise, accessible by boardwalk, as they all are. Uh, Chung Ling Lam owned the Hong Wu store and the original Chinese bunkhouses that were located in Steveston by the east of the site. Uh, unfortunately, the last of the original Richmond bunkhouses was demolished in 1977, and that's the prettiest picture of the whole thing, uh, and not of the bunkhouse. Um, <laughs> uh, the bunkhouse was built circa 1920 for the Anglo-British Columbia Packing Company's Glenary Cannery at Night Inlet, and in 1951, it was moved onto a barge, moved to Phoenix Cannery, and now it's here, and I'm done. <laughs>